In his third title defense, Jack Johnson takes on fireman Jim Flynn. Las Vegas, 4th of July, 1912. But first, let's watch Johnson training just two days prior to the fight. Here's champion Jack Johnson sparring with Marty Cutler. Johnson wanted to box on the bare ground instead of the ring because he felt his legs would be strengthened. Spectators paid an exorbitant $5 a ticket to watch this training session. According to Johnson, he hasn't done any training in five months. Johnson is a whopping 245 pounds, a far cry from his solid 200-pound championship form of two years ago. Johnson way overweight. Flynn is in black. Here in Las Vegas, New Mexico, the temperature today is a blistering 95 degrees. Johnson keeping Flynn off of him. Good left jabs by champion Jack Johnson. Johnson began his professional career in 1897, 15 years ago. The same year, gentleman Jim Corbett lost his heavyweight championship to Bob Fitzsimmons. The 34-year-old Johnson won the heavyweight title in 1908, four years ago, when he beat Tommy Burns in Sydney, Australia. Jack followed Burns all over the world and finally got the title shot when he was 30 years old. Flynn likes to work in close. Fireman Jim Flynn is a tough, rough-and-tumble battler. He began his professional career in 1901, 11 years ago. The last fight for the 33-year-old Flynn was his knockout over Al Williams in Toronto six months ago. Last year, Flynn fought 10 times without a loss, winning eight times by KO. Johnson seems in complete control here in round one. <laughs> Flynn's most notable effort in the ring was a 10-round draw with the great Sam Lankford. This same Jim Flynn, five years after today's fight, will go on to knock out the great Manasseh Mahler, Jack Dempsey, in the first round in 1917. That feat alone could be called a career highlight. Johnson keeping Flynn off with that long left. Johnson toying with Flynn, smiling at ringside. Champion Jack Johnson seems to be in complete control here in round two. Crisp uppercuts on the inside by Johnson. What's this? Flynn is butting. Fireman Jim Flynn is butting. Referee Smith warns Flynn. This is Marcus of Queensbury rules. He motions the two fighters to continue.
The referee says to Flynn, stop using your head in there. Now Johnson wants to keep Flynn at long range. Johnson using that uppercut on the inside. A hard headshot by Flynn. The referee warns Jim. Jim continues to butt Johnson. Flynn puts his hands on his hips. Why can't I use my head? The referee says to continue to fight. And that's the end of the round. Johnson continued to control the action during round three. Here in round four, we see the champion still setting the pace. Actually, this is the second meeting of these two fighters. In 1907, five years ago, Johnson KO'd Flynn in the 11th round at San Francisco. Johnson using that beautiful left jab. The referee warns Flynn once again for butting. They cautiously shake hands. Since winning the title, Johnson has defended it twice. Jack KO'd Stanley Ketchell in the 12th round in 1909, and he KO'd the previously undefeated retired heavyweight champion, James J. Jeffries, in the 15th round in 1910. A marvelous barrage of punches by Jack Johnson. Referee tells Flynn to stay away from that head. And there's the end of the round. The champion continued to dominate in rounds five through eight. Here in round nine, it's clear that Johnson is the far superior fighter. This world championship contest has no schedule limit of rounds. Both men have agreed to fight to a finish until one or the other is stopped. Thus, this fight could conceivably go on until the next day if both men have the strength and condition to continue. Flynn butting again. Flynn using that head. The referee warns Jim. He's got to fight with his hands. What's this? The sheriff is entering the ring and stopping the fight to prevent Flynn from receiving further punishment. The crowd goes wild as it's announced that Johnson is awarded a ninth round knockout win. The great Jack Johnson retains the heavyweight championship of the world in Las Vegas, New Mexico on July 4th, 1912.